Hi. So one of the new features that I've added to the latest version of the VASC firmware and VASC tool is that you can use the VASC as an SOD programmer. And this is useful, for example, if you want to make your own uh, Bluetooth module that works with the VASC tool app, or if you want to fix uh, a VASC that has uh, been bricked in some way or that has a broken bootloader. So I will start with this Bluetooth module. This is the one of the ones I got off from eBay. And in order to do this, you can use the SVD port on the VASC and um, use it as an SVD program output in this case. Uh, this is based on the Blackmagic Probe project that um, essentially uses an SDM where you can use any microcontroller essentially where you can just read and write the GPIO pins and make them into SVD programs. And that is really cool. And I added some parts of this to the VASC firmware. So in order to use it, you can uh, you have to connect. Uh, let's see if you can zoom in. You have to connect uh, SVD I/O. Make this window a bit bigger. You have to connect uh, SVD I/O and the clock and ground. And in general, you shouldn't connect to VCC if the device you're programming is powered. But this one is not powered, so I'm going to connect with VCC as well. And then you can power this one from the programming port. And uh, once you have done that, you can go to VASC tool and connect to the VASC. And then there's this new SVD prog page down here. And um, while you are connected to the VASC, you can hit connect here as well. And what will it do? It will try to connect to uh, the device that is connected over SVD port and figure out what kind of uh, device is connected. In this case, it found an RF5182. And this version has 256K flash and 32K RAM. And once it finds the device, it will show some included firmwares that are compatible with this particular MCU. And uh, here we found um, some BLE firmwares and one for a remote. And uh, with the NREF 51s, um, you have to keep in mind that sometimes there are there actually, actually two different differences they can have. One is that sometimes they have a 60 megahertz clock and sometimes they have a 32 megahertz clock. On the NR52 series, it doesn't seem all of them seem to have the same clock, so then, you, then that's not a problem. And the other thing is that some of them only have 16K flash or 16K RAM, I mean, and if you have 16K, then you cannot, then you have to use a more limited version of the firmware. And if this one actually finds the 16K version, it will, will show the compatible firmware with this one. The main difference between the, with the 16K one is that it will not work with the, the remotes for that will be coming in the future. So anyway, this is a 32K one. And uh, I know that this one happens to have a 60 megahertz crystal and uh, therefore will choose this uh, 60 megahertz version of the firmware. And the file name also shows which, R which RX pin it has, which is 11 in this case, and which TX pin it has, which is nine in this case. And also an LED pin if you have an LED. It's not important that the LED is connected, but the other two have to be connected. And um, so let's go ahead and do that. We can click upload here, then it will erase the flash and it will upload this one. It will also upload the soft device. And then once we hit disconnect, then this one should be up and running. And then if we take the VASC tool app and uh, click scan, then we should be able to find this one. And we did. We can connect now, but since we are not connected over the UART, we will uh, just be connected over BLE and then we'll time out and see that say they couldn't read the firmware version from the VASC, which is well, of course, will be the case if you're not connected to Comport. And um, then once you have the firmware on this one, we can connect again so we can see the file name. Uh, then you have to figure out how to connect it to the Comport. And essentially what they have to do is, um, if you look at the sticker here, you can see that, um, yeah, hopefully you can see it at least, see if I can focus a bit more. You can see that they have the different pin numbers can barely see them, but here we have a pin 09, for example, which in this case will be the TX pin. And then we have pin uh, 11 next to it. I think it's this pin and this pin. And what we would have to do is connect uh, 9, which is TX on this one, to RX on the VASC, and RX on the VASC to TX on this one, which is 11. So you have to cross RX and TX. And if you would do that, you would be able to connect this one to this one with the VASC. So for the NRF51 series, currently VASC will include firmware for the NRF51s 
and also for the Adreno 52. And from the 52 series, it su supports the uh, 52832 and the 52840. And it will, again, it will do the same thing. When you connect it, it will figure out which firmware are compatible with the device that is connected. And um, you can also use this for development. So you can also use a custom file. It will remember the last one you had. And then you can use the Vasquez and program and debugger uh, while you're developing if you want to, if you don't have an ST-Link or something like that. So let's, uh, let's go to the next step, which will be to actually fix a bricked Vasquez. This one isn't bricked, but we can pretend that it is. So we'll disconnect this one. And then I will uh, put another VASC up here. And uh, connect the SVD cable. Now, what you have to keep in mind with the VASCs is that you should never connect the SVD cable or the VCC cable between them. So you see, this one is just uh, hanging this connector. So we only have three connections. And both VASCs should be powered on the input. So you have uh, IO, SVD IO, ground, and the clock. And going back to VASC tool, uh, keep in mind the VASC, the USB cable is plugged into this one. Uh, going back to VASC tool, we can hit connect again. And then we see that instead of the NRF 51, we find an stm 32 f 4 down here. And then it shows all the VASC firmwares that are included with VASC tool. And here we have to choose the correct one because it will not figure out which hardware version this is. And I'm going to go ahead and choose the VASC 6 because that's what we have. And then we hit upload. On the VASC or on STM32 F4, it takes a lot longer to erase the flash, but uh, just be patient, it should start programming eventually. And once it has done that, it will upload the firmware and also the bootloader. So even if you have a brick the bootloader on uh, this one, you can fix it this way. And then after a while, um, when it's done, when you hit disconnect, then this one, you can see an LED, so it will reboot. And when it's done, it should boot into the latest firmware and it should be working. It should also have the bootloader. So that's quite nice. And you can also here, again as before, you can use your custom files if you, if you want to do that. Um, another thing you can do, which is quite cool, I think, with the uh, Blackmagic Probe stuff, is you can go to the terminal. Uh, you got some output actually when running this. So if you click uh, the question mark, you can see some commands. And um, here we got uh, those BM commands. And here you can, for example, do the SVDP scan. And it will show all the devices. And we found this one, of course. And then you can attach this one. And from here, you can do some other things. For example, you can do, um, let's see, where is it? Blackmagic target help. And you can show all the uh, commands that the Blackmagic Probe software supports for this target. And you have uh, erase mass and you have options and things like that. So you can, for example, you can read or manipulate the option bytes and that you do with the Blackmagic target command. And you can do option. And I think this will just uh, read it. And you can also do option and you can write a new hex value here. And when we connect it now, you can see the green LED will not be dim as we are communicating. And then you can do detach. And once you do that, uh, this one should be up and running again. So that's also quite convenient. So that's the demo head for, day, for today. Um, thanks for watching.